to Blender CC Live Learning. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some of new nodes in Blender 3.0. So currently, this is still alpha, uh, but there are some really useful uh, nodes that we can use and we can play around with. So let's take a look. The first one is face area. So this is quite new. And I want to demonstrate this face area using, maybe we start with a cone. So I got this idea to show you this uh, from Benny, Benny Govert, another Blender artist. So with this cone, okay, we know this is a cone and I want to open up this cone and I want to get rid of the depth. So it's going to be like a kind of like a circular thing. If I tap Z wireframe, we can see the wireframe. Let's get rid of the top cap and also I can increase the number of polygon face, but for now just leave it at one. So let's go back to solid. So this is just a simple cone, but it's become like a disc. We can split the edges and we want to take advantage of this face area and we're gonna try to instance polygon sphere on every polygon face, similar to adaptive polygon or maybe like tissue add-on, but not yet there but i will show you show it to you anyway so face area okay so okay now we have this control and we have we use the split edges with split edges actually every polygon face will be broken up if we use smooth you can see the polygon face is actually separated so now if i want to instance like a sphere on every polygon face. In order to do that, I can use mesh to points. So this one will grab the center of every polygon point. Okay, this is actually a very interesting node to use. Um, if I increase the number, you can see the effects. And if I use join geometry and take the original one after split edges actually okay now we can see polygon and every center of the polygons being generated okay so that's uh, pretty cool already and we still haven't used this face area so what should we do in order to do that okay we gonna grab a transfer or actually what is it called attribute capture okay after a split edge we want to capture the face area and then using this value to control the instance okay I haven't made the instance so let's create a instance on points pass in the polygon center and then we're gonna instance some sphere so I'll, I'll be using UV sphere plug this into the instance and cut this one plug this into the join geometry now we should have something happening okay we have instance of sphere on every polygon however the size needs to be coming from this guy okay i think now this is working okay so this is uv sphere being instance on every polygon face and the scale is based on the area and maybe we can use vector math to scale and multiply it's of the sphere all right so this is the result if the if the cone polygon face is actually closer to square I think the sphere will actually match the the size sort of like a should be like a kind of adaptive so this is actually yeah what I want to show you is very uh, kind of like nerdy, but 
this can get uh, this can be very useful at some point and I keep talking about adaptive polygons uh, that's something that's if you are using tissue add-on or stretch add-on you probably have heard of it um, okay I want to show you that you can also uh, use the edges of the sphere uh, like get the length of the edges in order to get you an interesting result but anyway for now switch back to face we stay at this and I'll give you the, the nodes reset up but I want to compare it with sphere chalk because it's very important <clears throat> very interesting so with sphere chalk again we can start with a mass viewer we don't have cone in sphere chalk but we have cylinder cylinder is like a cone in sphere chalk so I want to give this comparison because it's just a, this is like a study of geometry right using nodes and everything will become very clear so with sphere chalk we can control the cap top cap and top bottom uh, bottom cap and then we can get rid of the high so now we, we are back to the disk with, with sphere chalk we don't have split edges oh actually we have we have split edges and i think oh okay this one is doing different thing actually in sphere chalk we use polygon boom to separate polygon into separate uh, geometry however in this case we want to merge it back okay so now it's becoming the same same uh, mesh joined together again but we have adaptive polygons <coughs> we actually have <coughs> adaptive edges and adaptive polygons adaptive polygon is actually a very cool node let's get rid of this cylinder polygon boom mesh join okay this one we're gonna grab the polygon recipient so and we need a donor which is gonna be the sphere sphere plug this in And then the results should be coming from this guy. Uh, and we can we can join this into a single object. Now we can see uh, with uh, if we adjust the coefficient z, we can see how a sphere is adapting into this mesh. Okay, this this adaptive polygon nodes. We'll, uh, hopefully one day we can recreate this using geometry nodes so we don't need to rely on sphere chalk add-on but still you can do it today so sphere chalk add-on you need to make sure you install the add-on first um, I use sphere chalk for many many years before geometry nodes and I only know the basic but even using the basic uh, there are a lot of really cool nodes in sphere chalk more than 200 nodes um, Okay, so yeah, this is using sphere chalk. This is adaptive, and the cool thing is, you can see the this pattern that's looking like a like an orange or fruits, you know, like inside of the fruits, pomegranate or things like that. We have this ability to just quickly adapt one geometry into another polygon face. and i think with sphere chalk okay this is we are controlling the the z coefficients right you can also just plug in like a random number i believe you can see okay this is one of the things that's make that makes sphere chalks kind of really powerful and i believe that Geometry nodes can do this as well. Uh, uh, slightly different, but still. 
they both learned uh, like worth worth learning. Okay, this is the example from Benny Govert. In this case, he also used the position align Euler to vector. This is kind of to align the polygon sphere so it it can adapt to the polygon face. It's a it's very interesting setup. And the other one is actually this one, where he used it on the polygon edge and adapting the sphere trying to adapt the sphere into the polygon edge i will definitely come back to this in the future with the geometry nodes with uh sphere chalk if we go back to sphere chalk we have adaptive edges okay so you can use polygon boom and then try to adapt the the sphere into the polygon edge i think i'll just leave it here and let you try this yourself try to adapt the sphere into the polygon edge and this can be really useful for a lot of uh, procedural creations all right so thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye